Hello Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Today I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about Jesus's commission to the 12 disciples when he sends them out. And again, we're going to be hearing that they're referred to as apostles after this, which means sent ones. Uh, but I didn't get to really go over it much uh, this week, and I'll only get to do it briefly even in the coming weeks. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that commission, what it means, how it relates to us. And again, the text of his commission is in verses 8 to 11 of Mark chapter 6, where we read, These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave as a testimony against them. So these are very specific instructions for the apostles when they go out. They don't even necessarily do this later, you know, verbatim. It's not like for the rest of his life, Peter never carried an extra tunic around or never, uh, you know, had bread or bag uh, or money with him. But on this particular time, they are given these very specific instructions, but we can still learn from them because there are many principles that apply to the ministry of the apostles later and also apply to us. So uh, what are the things that we can learn from them? Number one, Jesus is telling the disciples who just observed him being rejected in his own hometown and even by his own family, he's telling them that they have to depend on God. When we are rejected, what we want to do is try and get an insurance policy, so to speak. But notice, Jesus is telling them, no, you're going to go forth, but you're going to have to depend upon God for your provision. You're not going to take money. You're not going to take about. You're not going to take an extra tunic or any of that. Um, and in fact, when you go into a town, you're going to depend upon God's provision. The first place that is opened up to you, you go and you stay there. And as long as you're in the town, you stay there. You don't trade up. You don't get a better place because it, you are not looking to people to be your provision. Rather, you are looking to God to be your provision. And so the principle that we learn from this is the ministry of the kingdom is uh, de not dependent upon worldly power and provision, but rather upon God. So even though we don't have extra tunics and we don't necessarily wear sandals around, the principle that we depend upon God for our provision is true for all time. Number two, Jesus commissions the disciples in words reminiscent of God's instructions during the Exodus and Passover. We might be surprised about this, but why Jesus picks the exact articles of clothing is because he's referencing back to the Passover. So it's coming up on the screen that you can see here where I've got the words highlighted. Notice in Mark chapter 6, you can read and see in verse 8, he mentions taking a staff. And then you can see in Exodus 12 verse 11 that it mentioned having the staff in your hand. Um, in uh, verse, uh, verse 8, he also mentions your belts, which is mentioned again in Exodus 12. Notice you can see it is highlighted in green. You can see the word sandals is highlighted in blue. Um, and then there is the word uh, tunic in Mark, which is similar to not having it, you know, with your cloak tucked into your belt because you had the one cloak, you didn't wear the outer cloak. So Jesus is here using terms that are reminiscent about the haste of when the Passover is going. And why is he doing this? He's making a statement to the disciples. I can't put it any better than the commentator James Edwards did uh, when he put these particular words. He said, these four items of clothing recall the haste and expectation of the Exodus. They suggest that the mission of the 12 announces something as foundational and revelatory as the Exodus from Egypt, and that the disciples must be as free from encumbrances as were the Israelites to serve their God in a new venture. And so we see here that the apostles are, are being reminded, this is not just some minor thing. And that there, there are actually other links. If you notice, there are 12 apostles. There are the 12 tribes of Israel. The same articles of clothing are, are being used. All of this is in reference to God is uh, doing a new exodus. He is gathering uh, the fulfillment of Israel, a new stage in Israel's identity to the people of God. And this really explains as well the startling instruction to shake from their feet the dust from any town that rejects the gospel of the kingdom. 
uh, because this is not something that we would do today, but this was done when Orthodox Jews left the Promised Land and they would go into Gentile territory. When they would leave the Gentile territory and be coming back into the Promised Land, they would shake the dust off their feet, they would empty it out of their robes, they would make sure they didn't even want the dust to be tracked with them back into the promised land because it was a statement that we are part of the people of God and these places are not part of God's people and God's land. So Jesus here is giving a startling instruction because any physical Jews who reject the gospel are being treated as outside the people of God because it's in Jesus that the true Israel is being formed. Now, this is a shocking thing, but the New Testament uh, states this again and again and again. And the same principle is true today. People become part of God's people, not by birth or by family, but by regeneration. It doesn't matter if you can trace your bloodline back to David and Moses and Abraham. It does not matter. One is part of God's people by receiving the gospel of the kingdom and by no other way. If you are not, as Paul puts it, not all Israel, uh, not everyone who's descended from Israel physically are part of the real Israel. And Jews and uh, Gentiles, who, rather, who have no claim to it physically are part of the true Israel. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. A new exodus has happened, a new Passover, uh, a new time of gathering the people of God. And so therefore, you may face rejection, but when you do, you treat it as being outside. It's a testimony against them that they have cut themselves off from God's covenant. And that leads to another point um, or, or I'll put two points together, actually, which is that it's a clear indication that the disciples can expect rejection just like Jesus had experienced. Uh, this is the experience of everyone who sows the word of the kingdom. But just like Jesus continued to preach, so we continue to preach. Uh, it was true for the apostles. They were going to experience rejection, and we read that not only in this ministry, but we read it, again, we'll see with John the Baptist this week coming up. We read it in the book of Acts. We can see it all the way through the pages of the New Testament into the book of Revelation. We see it down through church history, and brothers and sisters, we're going to see it today. To sow the word of the kingdom is going to bring rejection. It's often going to provoke offense. It, in some cases, even uh, causes persecution. But our response is to keep sowing the word, to keep trusting in God. He's our provision. We don't need worldly provision. We have our God. And so as we say every week, you and I are blessed. And God is an inexhaustible supply of blessing. So we can go forth and just keep spreading the blessing everywhere. We can be a blessing so that everywhere we go, blessing is dripping out regardless of the response of the people because God is our provision. We know he's going to watch over us. So I want to encourage you, continue to pray. Continue to reach out and share the gospel. Look for somebody this week that you can invite to come join with us as we hear the word of God together. You may be surprised how God will work and use your very simple words to draw people into the kingdom. I hope this is encouraging and helpful, and I look forward to us gathering again for worship this week. God bless.